Whether you're a homeowner, a DIYer, or someone who's just looking to get into the HVAC space or expand your knowledge, this video hopefully will help you to understand this new refrigerant change and what that means for you, either as a homeowner or someone who wants to start doing this type of work. There's definitely some interesting stuff going on right now with the HVAC industry, so I just want to share my thoughts and give you some information on it. Today's video is brought to you by Alpine Home Air, America's number one choice for quality, affordable HVAC equipment and unmatched customer service. And FilterBuy, your one-stop shop for all your replacement HVAC filter needs shipped directly to your door. So as of January of this year, 2025, 410A equipment has not been uh, manufactured. So a lot of companies have purchased a lot of 410A equipment, but all of the new stuff since January 1 is 454B or R32. Those are kind of the two refrigerants that are replacing 410A. And 410A is just being phased out, just like R22 was phased out back in 2005 or seven, something like that because of its impact on the environment. So 454B and R32 are going to be more environmentally friendly than 410A. And that's the big reason why they're phasing 410 out and putting this new refrigerant in place. Now the dilemma is they're producing this uh, refrigerant that's also referred to as A2L refrigerant. It's slightly flammable, but it is more um, env environmentally friendly. So they're producing the equipment actively the dilemma right now is that we can't get R454B or R32. Um, I think 454B is more so in demand, but we can't get it because of a container shortage. There was a issue with getting the bottles that stored the refrigerant and we haven't got it yet. So a lot of places are just waiting to get a huge shipment in. Um, hopefully this will get resolved, but as of right now, 454B is ridiculously expensive and that's gonna be forwarded on to the customer. Even if the contractor can get the refrigerant, it's going to be forwarded to the customer. So it's gonna be pretty expensive. You can still get it, it's just more expensive. Now, all that being said, the only time this is going to impact you as the homeowner is when you're gonna be charged for R454B or R32. Now, I wanna clear something up that a lot of people misunderstand. When you purchase a brand new system, say from Alpine Home Air or wherever, it will come pre-charged with so much refrigerant for a certain amount of line set. So if you get a mini split, it's generally going to be enough for about 25 feet of line set. Or if you get a DIY system, all of the line set is pre-charged so you don't even have to fool with anything refrigerant wise. But let's say you just get a regular split system and it's only gonna be charged for 15 feet of refrigerant. So anything beyond that 15 feet, let's say your system has a 30 foot line set all of that additional line set, you have to weigh in so many ounces per foot. Now, if you don't have the refrigerant, that becomes a real issue as your system will not function as it's intended. But generally speaking, if you have a 25 foot line set or maybe even a 30, a lot of times the system will still function. Your refrigerant levels will not be exactly where they need to be, but it will still condition the space and not freeze up. But when you get too low, you're gonna definitely run into freezing issues. So that's kind of the main reason why I suggest getting a 410A system versus a 454B if at all possible, because as of right now, you can still purchase 410A for a reasonable price, whereas 454B is really expensive. Now, hopefully the idea is that that will come down as they figure out the supply chain issues or the containment issues, and that hopefully will come down. But we're just in this weird section of time where 454B is crazy expensive. I think it's going to pass, but this is just my thought on the whole matter. So just for reference, every system is going to come with a label on the side of it, and it's going to show what the factory charge is. So this is how many feet and ounces were pre-charged into this system for 15 feet of line set. This is a pretty small system, one and a half ton. So we have four pounds, four ounces. If you had like a five ton, this could be as much as six or seven pounds and that's all put in the condenser, and then you pull a vacuum on these lines that go into the home, and then once you're ready, you open these valves, and that introduces all of that refrigerant into the lines. 
So again, you can run it. Um, if it's a little bit low, you can still run it. But if you get too low, you're going to have freezing problems. So you definitely want to charge in the right amount in order for it to function properly. So what does that mean for you as a homeowner who's maybe looking to replace his whole system or his condenser? My opinion is if you can find a 410A unit, I say go ahead and go for it. Purchase that equipment because the 410A refrigerant is going to be around for a long time to come. Just like R22, you can still purchase it. It's more expensive, but it's readily available. And there's a lot less things to worry about with 410 that there are with 454B and R32. There is no mitigation because 410A is not flammable. Whereas with this new refrigerant, you have to have a mitigation system in place. And so if it detects a leak in the system of refrigerant in the evaporator coil, it will run the fan and it will turn the system off. So it'll just go into that mode. Whereas with 410A, you're not gonna have that because it's just not flammable. Now, pretty soon we'll all be forced to go with 454B or uh, R32. But as of right now, like I said, a lot of distributors have purchased a lot of 410A equipment. Now, since we're talking about this new refrigerant, I just wanna talk about some of the differences here. Number one is that it's flammable, but let's talk about pressures for a little bit. So 454B is going to be slightly lower in pressure than 410A, but it's gonna be very comparable to 410A. So still very much higher than what R22 runs at, but if you're accustomed to 410 pressures, um, these are gonna be about the same. So generally speaking, about 130 to 150 on the low side and about 350 to 400 on the high side. That's a good average running pressure for a 410A or 454B system. Now you should be able to use the same gauges that you're currently using, so you don't have to worry about that, but you are gonna have to pick up one of these little adapters. Now all this is gonna do is take the left-hand threads on your tank of 454B and it's going to convert it to the regular size of your gauges. So that's really the only thing that's needed additional. Um, your gauges will still connect the same to the actual unit, it's normal threads. It's just the tank itself is going to be left-hand threads and that's why you need one of these adapters. Now in terms of installing these systems, we have some upcoming videos that are gonna show step-by-step -step how to install a 454B system, but it is basically the same thing as installing a 410A system. In some situations, you have a mitigation board when you're putting a AC system on a furnace that doesn't know it's um, using A2L refrigerants. But if you're buying a whole system, you won't have that mitigation board. Um, you'll just have a sensor that plugs into the furnace board and it's super easy. Now let's briefly talk about pricing. That's something that's on a lot of you all's minds um, when it comes to replacing your system. Now, a lot of these distributors have awesome pricing. Alpine Home Air is one of the best places to find HVAC equipment, uh, reasonably priced, and they have next level customer service. They really wanna make sure that you get the right equipment for your particular needs. So during COVID, the price of HVAC equipment went up due to obvious reasons, supply chain issues. Um, they couldn't get people to work at different places to get the actual equipment. So prices went up. And then of course, these, this whole thing with tariffs has raised the price of HVAC equipment. And then on top of that, we have the A2L stuff. So it's just continuing to climb and climb and climb. So in my opinion, if you can't get access to 410A equipment, go with 454B. It's kind of similar to the housing market. People are waiting for housing to come down. In reality, we think it's just gonna keep on going up. So you're better off just purchasing a home or in this situation, purchasing a system, whether it's 454B or 410A, because these prices are going to continue to climb. And I say, may as well just go ahead and get your equipment, get it replaced, have peace of mind knowing that it's new, it's covered with a 10 year warranty and you don't have to worry about it. Now with that, I wanna mention our Patreon remote support membership. You can find that at patreon.com slash DIY HVAC guy. We can actually help you with your install if you're wanting to tackle this yourself. We can register the system and get the warranty for you, that full 10 year warranty, and a plethora of other things that we offer through that service. Again, that's patreon.com slash DIY HVAC guy. Well guys, I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Now, if you wanna see a video that shows exactly what you need to do if you want to save thousands of dollars in replacing your HVAC system, 
you don't have to go the traditional way of just calling a contractor and spending fifteen to twenty thousand dollars and and getting a loan for that you can go another route so if you want to see that video you can find it right here and until next time you guys be safe later